Dear colleagues, it's a pleasure to see you at the Euro Conference on this remarkable day for Lithuania. I'm Gedris Simonavičius from the Bank of Lithuania, and I will moderate this press conference. I'm pleased to present the participants of the press conference. So I will start from the left. Mario Draghi, President of the European Central Bank, Chairman of the Bank of Lithuania, Vitas Vasilauskas, Jurki Katainen, Vice President of the European Commission, responsible for economic and monetary affairs and, of course, the Euro, and Minister of Finance of Lithuania, Rimantas Šažius. A few words on technical side of things. This conference, as you know, will be broadcasted directly, so questions have to be asked with the microphone. It is, it is very important. Also, as usual, if you have a question, please raise your hand, introduce yourself and uh, say to whom your question is addressed. And uh, of course we have translation, so you have headphones, and channel one is for English, channel two for Lithuanian. And I would like to remind one very important thing, as you know, uh, VCB has so-called quiet period, that's why we should focus on Lithuanian issues, that's why we are here. So therefore, colleagues, we are ready for your questions. Uh, yes, please. Kristina uh, Yatskunde, National Lithuanian National Television. A question to Mr. President, Mr. Draghi. Uh, in your point of view, what are the most important benefits could Lithuanian people could expect from Euro, and could Euro be beneficial for Lithuania? Talking about geopolitical situation and tensions across the borders. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. And the same I... question to Mr. Vasilauskas. Pone Vasilauskas, galėtų atmet tą patį atsakyti lietuviškai jūsų požiūrio. Kristina, could you repeat the question to Mr. President? Okay. What are the most important... Slowly, slowly. Okay. What are the most important benefits could Lithuanian people expect from Euro? And also, could Euro be beneficial for Lithuania talking about geopolitical situations? and tensions across the border. Thank you very much. Thank you. Both the Euro area and Lithuania will, have, uh, will benefit from each other. The, the, uh, Lithuania will benefit from uh, belonging to the same uh, currency, to sharing the same currency uh, with, uh, with the rest of the Euro area. Its economic contribution together with the other Baltic states is, uh, is quite significant, is uh, about around 2% of total GDP, uh, total exports, and 1.5% of total GDP. It's, um, it's a sign that uh, the way to go for the Euro area is to go for greater integration. The greater integration by itself will, has carried and will continue to carry to all its participants further benefits in terms of better functioning markets, mutual sharing of sovereignty. That's the most important thing to understand. Countries on themselves very often have lost sovereignty being on their own. They can regain sovereignty sharing their national sovereignty with others. That's our experience with monetary policy, for example. That is the main, that is the main benefit. As far as the, uh, I would say, you mentioned the geopolitical risk. Uh, I'm not, the, in a sense, the best uh, equipped person to comment on these issues, but certainly to be part of the same Euro family, uh, it, should be, it should be like, uh, it should make people feel uh, safer. Thank you. Okay, so I have, uh, have asked to, 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 to speak in Lufenian, yes, as I understood. Now, the Colbert appear, if the crew, you ka Mano kaip Centrinio banko vadovo įsivaizdavimas yra stabilumas, yra vertybė. Tai aš manau, su bendra valiuta mes eliminuojam vieną iš svarbiausių rizikų, tai yra valiutos kurso rizika. O tai duoda be jokios abejonės stabilumas. Todėl stabilumas ir didesnė integracija yra 
tie du esminiai faktoriai, kurie iš tikrųjų na, reiškia gerovę ir perspektyvas tokiai mažai atvirai ekonomikai kaip Lietuva. Yes, please, why this? Uh, Vaidantas Benišis, uh, Baltic News Service News Agency, a question for Mr. Draghi. Uh, could you please tell how Ukraine crisis and sanctions on and from Russia is currently affecting the uh, EU economy? And uh, do you see the Baltic region and Lithuania as the, among the states that are most vulnerable to the current crisis? Thank you. Thank you. But so far, I would say the effect of, if we take, let, let me step back, if we take a, a, a static snapshot of the current situation, we see that uh, the, both the financial links with Ukraine uh, and with Russia, although to a different extent, uh, are, uh, are, not, uh, are not very, very big. They are obviously bigger with Russia than they are with Ukraine, but they still they are not uh, in, in percentage of the total assets of the euro area are not very big. Um, the same thing is with uh, trade uh, flows. Same consideration applies to trade flows. However, uh, the Russian economy has been going down. The growth has decreased considerably and that certainly is going to have some effect on, on European demand. But one should also ask two more questions. It, it, is, it is indeed true that if we compare the flows to the euro average, you see that these flows are not, are not remarkable. At the same time, we can have local situation, local situations of, uh, of, that, are, that could be very affected by by the present situation, by the present geopolitical environment. And we have to have an eye to energy, of course, first and foremost. And, uh, and the second consideration we have to make is that this is a pretty static uh, view. Uh, we don't know how it will unfold in the future. So it would be I would, I would think at this stage it would be premature to foresee what the final consequences of, the, of these developments would be. Callum Williams from the uh, Economist newspaper. Uh, this is Colin from Mr. Uh, Grandi. Um, does it worry you that um, by January there will be yet another country I'm Europe. sorry, does it worry that? Does it worry you Are that by January there will be yet another country in the Eurozone that has fallen crisis, that has deflation, that is a concern? No, it doesn't worry me. Uh, we already have our own problems and I don't think it's going to change much. Thank you. Oh, by the way, uh, let me add something. This is a country that's growing at 3%, which is also going to make some changes in a positive way. So, thank you. How long do you expect Lithuania will keep to the limits enshrined in the euro entry criteria, the Maastricht criteria? Uh, you said in front of the hearing on Monday that uh, Europe's Parliament has said that alter the size and the composition of its unconventional interventions. What exactly do you mean by that? What are the aspects of the intervention? Yes, I answered to your question. Our focus is for this year. If we are talking about inflation in Lithuania about 0.6 percent, uh, next year 0. Uh, 1.5 and in 2016 can be 0.8 something like that. So in the medium term, of course, we will keep on the, on the, on the Target, I would say, 
of uh, 2%. 2%. So I do not see uh, any any circumstances which could influence uh, aggressive increase of inflation in this part of the world. But we will see. We will see. Thank you. Um, as said at the beginning, I can't be specific at this precise point in time, but I can restate what uh, the Governing Council unanimous commitment is, that is to say, to use also other unconventional instruments within its mandate uh, if, uh, the, if it were to assess a worsening in the medium term outlook for inflation. Yes. Alessandro Speciale, Bloomberg News. Um, President Draghi, I have a question for you. I know it's in the uh, silent period before the Governing Council. Um, but in your efforts to bring inflation back um, is it is the risk of low inflation for long that you have often pointed out also linked to a lower potential growth in the euro area. What I mean is, is it structural? We believe that the, the experience of the last two years shows that uh, the longer the period of too low inflation lasts, the higher is the likelihood that it's low because of what you said, because of weak demand, because of high unemployment, because of a high slack. In other words, the longer the period of low inflation lasts, the more important would become the cyclical component of, uh, of, uh, of our business cycle. Uh, as, as, um, as you know, I mean, we have different views between here and the United States. In the United States, everything is cyclical. In Europe, everything is structural. And uh, the speech I gave in Jackson Hole temperates, moderates this view, saying that uh, uh, certainly much of it is structural. But there's also a cyclical component. It's also another interesting thing. When we analyze the, when we go back and analyze the last two years inflation, we see that inflation in 2011 was 3%, now it's 0 0.4%. percent And uh, for a long time we said that this would depend on uh, the behavior of uh, oil and food prices. And in fact, if you take that into account, you would explain something like 80% of the fall in inflation. Then, but then after the, the oil prices, uh, I'm sorry, the dollar prices of these components stopped declining or declined more, more mildly, it was the exchange rate appreciation which, in a certain sense, compounded on this. And this was, and then we had the relative price adjustment that certain countries had to undergo because their prices were completely out of range and they had to turn back and become competitive again. So all these were causes, and, this, and, and looking at these causes would explain the whole of the fall of inflation. Now, over the re more recent past, we see that a quarter of the forecast error that we made in forecast and inflation is not due to uh, the mistakes we made in forecasting assumptions about the oil price, about food price, about exchange rate, and so on, but it's due to other factors, one of which is, a, again, is unemployment, one of which is the slack, the size of the slack of the economy. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Just, just. Todd Buell from the Wall Street Journal. Um, the Draghi conference. I mean, monetary policy. I'm going to say this. I'm going to have it in one week. So I just. I expect this will be questioning about. It's, it's not about monetary policy. Um, I have a question, actually, about the remark that you made in the speech where you praised the fiscal reforms of the Baltic countries, and I'm wondering to what extent can that be read as perhaps a signal to other, maybe larger eurozone countries that they also need to maybe pick up the pace on fiscal reforms. Thank you.
In the experience of the Baltic countries shows two things, three things. The capacity to run fiscal consolidation in a growth-friendly way, both as far as composition of consolidation and timing of consolidation, and basically mastering public support behind this effort, precisely because these consolidations were growth-friendly. I mean, this is, a, I wouldn't call it a lesson, we don't, I don't like to give lessons to anybody, but certainly is a powerful message to everybody else. Thank you. Yes, colleagues. Milda. Mr. Draghi, just a follow-up on the, uh, on the example of the Baltic Senate, I think the, uh, yes, indeed, it's always, uh, it's always sad when we see young people live in a country uh, to find a job elsewhere, and, uh, and this is uh, um, unfortunately the experience of several member states right now. Uh, at the same time, you see that when countries go back to growth, you have opposite flows of immigration. People like to work in their own countries, so they, they, they tend to come back. And, uh, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, this is what uh, the, uh, well, the Baltic examples, but also Lithuania, will show, and is showing, as a matter of fact. And um, that's, that's what I want to say. I mean, the, as far as future challenges, we'll, we'll comment later, perhaps. Thank you. Yes, Ir buvo deklaruota naujosios vyriausybės, kurie atėjo į Lietuvą po 2012 metų rinkimų, kad griežta fiskalinė politika bus tęsiama, pratesiama, tęsiant tas reformas ir tęsiant tas nuostatas, kurios buvo įgyvendintos ir ankstesnės vyriausybės, ir mes nesiruošiame ir nesiruošiame atversti anksčiau vykdytos politikos aukštinkojimų, tačiau ir šiandien nuskambėjo, kad priemonės, kurių įmamasi supvarkyti fiskalinėm ūkiui, jos turi nestabdyti augimo, jos turi būti socialiai teisingos ir būtent apie tai aš kalbėjau konferencijoje, kad iš praeities mes turime mokytis ir matyti ne tik tai, tai kas mums pavyko, bet matyti ir tai, kas mums pavyko blogai, kur pridarėme klaidų, kurias po to, pavyzdžiui, pripažino konstitucinis teismas, kad atėkėtų klaidų nedaryti. Planuojant kitų metų biudžetą, o biudžeto planavimas vyksta ir skaičius jūs netrukus pamatysite, mes laikomės ir laikysimės mūsų prisimtų ir tarptautinių įsipareigojimų, o svarbiausia mūsų prisimtų vidinių teisės normų fiskalinės drausinės įstatymo. Ir visus klausimus, kurie iškyla šioje srities, presime grįžtose fiskalinius rėmus. Ir tai manoma padaryti. Gerbiamas jūs komisijos nariai, kaip jūs įvardintumėte Lietuvos laukiančius iššūkius bei galimybės įsilieti į eurozonos rinką, o taip pat kaip euras galėtų paveikti mūsų konkurencingumą? Thank you very much. As we heard in the 
previous session, Prime Minister Mustafa said that pure is not the value itself, but it's, uh, it can be a tool to achieve better economic growth. Um, Europe can bring stability. There is no risk to exchange rate risks, which may be remarkable for those who plan to do investments. So it's stability, even though it's not an issue, it's people tend to think every single day, but uh, if there's no stability, then everybody recognizes that Europe can bring stability. Uh, another thing, and in this very important aspect of competitiveness, also the absence of exchange rate risks is a very important part of competitiveness. Also, the price of variability, so you can compare the price level, um, and it usually increases competition. And competition is a precondition of productivity and competitiveness. So at least these two aspects are important when, when looking at the the uh, euro's impact to competitiveness. And of course, it's easier for the ordinary citizens to travel, for ordinary entrepreneurs to do to, to trade when you can easily see the price level and, and compare the prices. So in that sense, um, especially for the small country, why not uh, the bigger country also, but especially for the small country, it's it, very important and stabilizing Commissioner, now we have a possibility for the last question. No one, so thank you very much, colleagues. Thank you for this